Nappy Hair, written by Carl Olivia Heron, illustrated by Joe Sapita. Reading by Robin Muldor Ingram. Uncle Mordecai told this story at the backyard picnic. Uncle Mordecai told it, little Jimmy taped it, and here it is. Brenda, you sure do got some nappy hair on your head, don't you? It's your hair, Brenda. Take the cake and come back and get the plate. It ain't easy to come by that kind of hair. You just can't blame Africa. It's willful. Them some willful, intentional naps you got all over your head. Your hair intended to be nappy. I mean, combing your hair is like scrunching through the New Mexico desert and brogarians in the heat of summer. It's like crunching through snow, about a foot, two feet at least, with two inches of crust on the top. Y'all know how it sounds when you crunching through snow like that. That's what her hair sounds like when she comb it out in the morning. Ashamed? I'm not ashamed. I'm proud. She's the only one in her school knows how to talk right. A rose among a thousand thorns. Them old hardheads think they can talk English, but this child talks the king's English, talks the queen's English too. But she sure, Lord, got some nappy hair on her head. And I'm going to tell y'all how she came up with all this nappy hair. Her hair was an act of God and an act of God that came straight through Africa. You see, the angels went up to God. Angels walked up to God to talk him out of it. Yup, they say, Lord, 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 why you gotta be so mean? Why you got to be so willful? Why you gotta be so ornery thinking about giving that nappy, nappy hair to that innocent little child? Sweet little girl like that. And you napping up her hair like you ain't got good sense. Napping up her hair. Five, six, seven, maybe eight complete circles per inch. I'm talking about eight complete circles per inch of her hair. And the angel's trying to talk him out of it. But God, God wanted himself some nappy hair upon the face of the earth. So God turned himself around, looked them angels square in the face. And God say, get out of my way. He said, this is my world. This is my world. And this child, this sweet little brown baby girl child, she's going to have the nappiest hair in the world. Ain't going to be nothing they come up with going to straighten this child's hair. I'm talking about straightening combs. I'm talking about relaxers and processes. Ain't nothing going to straighten up the naps on this child's hair. And it was done. So here she come, sitting back in Africa making plans, squinching her eyes and looking deep, getting ready to come to America with them slaves. Sold your mama for a nickel and your daddy for a dime. I say they sold your mama for a buffalo and your daddy, they sold him for one thin dime. But this nap come riding express, coming on across the ocean from Africa, wouldn't stop for nothing. Dance right on through all the wimp hair, wouldn't stop, wouldn't mix, wouldn't slow down for nobody. Every time they tried to mess with her hair, she stomped it, kicked it, snuck on around and came on through. Think she playing football, basketball or something, driven on down the line. And when she was born, when we look down on our hair in the cradle, we all shout out and jump back, laugh and shout because I tell you she had the kinkiest, the nappiest, the fuzziest, the most screwed up, squeezed up, knotted up, tangled up, twisted up, nappiest. I'm telling you she had the nappiest hair you've ever seen in your life. And the Lord, the Lord in heaven, the Lord who brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he looked down on this cute little baby brown girl. He looked at her and he said, well done. He said, I got me one. One nap of her hair is the only perfect circle in nature. 
I got me a cute little brown baby girl. I got me at long last this cute little brown baby girl. And she's got the nappiest hair in the world. The end.